What's going on guys? It's Alex here with Northern Scavenger and today we are going to be doing a quick overview on my film kit. So we've gotten a lot of questions over the years about what we bring for cameras on our trips, how we film our trips, um, and of course, how do we bring enough batteries to make it last throughout the trip. So I think I've developed a pretty good system up to now, like I keep evolving it all the time, but I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm currently using in my kit. This will be my kit this year for uh, the 2021 season and has been the one that I pretty much use for the last few years now. So. I uh, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about that and uh, give you guys an overview on the kit. Alex! Alex! Yeah? <laughs> what are you doing? What do you want now? Are you just sitting in a canoe talking to yourself right now? There's a camera. Seriously? People are gonna watch the video later. They're gonna see it. I'm not just talking to my- <laughs> I'm not talking to myself, so they'll see it later. You know the neighbors can see you, right? Yeah. Seriously, all the all the neighbors can see you. Come on, man, get out of here. Let me do my thing. <laughs> Come on, for me. All right, I'll leave. I'll leave. Thanks. Seriously, you should get some hobbies. All right, so the very first thing I want to highlight is my Pelican case. So this is the Pelican 1500 case. It has been beaten up over the last few years. I've probably had this now for three, four years. Um, lots of scratches and bang marks all over it, but. I wouldn't be able to carry my camera gear on a trip with me without this thing. So they're highly durable cases, but also waterproof. Uh, some of you have seen our videos, most notably the one, the video where we wrapped a canoe in Labrador. There's a clip where Chris grabs my Pelican case out of the canoe and hands it to me. He's like pulling it through water. You just see my Pelican case getting fed with water. And I remember that moment wondering like, is this Pelican case really as waterproof as they say it is because I had never tested it like that before. So I was I was very nervous uh, when my water was just getting, when my Pelican case was just getting crushed with water and it was completely bone dry on the inside, which is amazing. So I think it is something that you probably want to check every once in a while is just the seal on it, just to make sure that the seal's still good. Sticks get caught in between here. You need to be careful about that. But for the most part, these things are awesome. They clip shut very well and lock into place. I have like a little tether that I keep off of my Pelican case that uh, just basically allows me to quickly with a little carabiner here, locking carabiner, quickly lock the Pelican case onto whatever I'm uh, traveling with. So it uh, is a little bit of a safer system there to make sure that I don't lose the, the Pelican case when if we were to flip in a rapid or something. So that is the Pelican case. Now, time to look at a few of the items that are inside this Pelican case. So, very first thing I want to talk about today is the camera that I use. The main, our primary go-to camera, which is the Canon 80D. So, the Canon 80D is our primary camera to shoot with. I have this camera, Noah also has this camera. He actually got it first, which was kind of what got me onto this camera, but in doing my research, this camera really stood out to me because of the balance of both the photo quality and the video quality. So when we're out there, we wanna have one camera that's gonna be able to shoot great video, but also get us the, the photos that we wanna have uh, for when we get back as well. So the camera will shoot uh, in full HD up to 60 frames per second, and there's a 24 megapixel uh, sensor for the photos, which is perfect for what we need at the time, and we've been very happy with uh, how it's worked for us on all of our trips. A few things that stood out to me specifically about Canon would be its durability. So Canon's DSLRs are known to be durable and also weather resistant. So we wanna be able to take this camera out when it's when there's slight rain. We wanna be able to take it out when it's snowing in the winter. And uh, the durability behind these cameras is pretty impressive. So hearing that from multiple other photographers and videographers was kind of what gave us the confidence to go with it. Also, uh, Canon's also known for its autofocus. So uh, us being able to set up the camera and run around camp and have it 
track us is amazing and we've been really impressed with its ability to actually keep all of the shots in focus, which has been amazing. One specific thing to note about the Canon 80D is it does have a crop factor. Because it's not a full frame sensor, uh, the crop factor on this is about 1.6 times. So what that means is any lens that you're gonna have that goes on this camera, let's say, the, the lens that I primarily use is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, you need to factor in that that is actually more of like a 25 to 52 millimeter lens when you multiply by 1.6 uh, to, to take into consideration the crop factor on that uh, camera. So I love my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I pretty much use it exclusively and I am still able to, with that crop factor, to hold the camera out in front of me and actually film myself while I'm out uh, while I'm out walking around through the bush or whatever and taking shots. So a few key things that I want to talk about with this camera. Uh, one is you need to get a microphone for it. So Noah and I used to film without a microphone and there are so many shots that we have that are absolutely ruined uh, because of wind noise. Even times when we had the microphone and we decided not to pull it out of the case because it would take too long to set up, we're much better now at any time we're pulling that camera out, making sure that we're also pulling out that microphone and we've gotten really efficient at setting it all up. The second piece would be investing in a good quality lens. For a long time I was using Canon's kit lens that came with this camera. It was an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, I believe, and it just wasn't anything special at all, and I didn't know any better. When I upgraded to one of Canon's EF professional lenses, I was blown away at the change in quality, not just on video side, but also on the photo. It like made a whole world of difference. I'm not a, I'm not a lens expert, so I can't tell you exactly why that is. I just know that investing in these better lenses does translate to better quality production and can, and can really make a difference on the body of a, of a camera. The final piece of gear that I wanna talk about that I have bought for this camera is my Tiffin Variable ND filter. This filter I primarily use for photos. I haven't really used it too often for video. I'm still kind of learning with it, but uh, this has allowed me to get some really cool photos, allowing me to do some long exposure photos in the daytime. So you can think of a variable ND filter kind of like a pair of sunglasses for your camera. And it allows me to use longer exposures in the day to get those silky waterfall shots uh, that I was able to get on our flow to James Bay trip, for example. All right, so moving on past the Canon camera, the next most important, arguably the most important piece of camera equipment that we bring on our trips now is the DJI Mavic Air drone. This guy right here. This has been a pretty essential piece of equipment that we've been bringing on our trips. We know we've heard a lot of comments on the, on the uh, drone footage that we're able to capture on our trips. It really adds a whole new perspective, uh, really brings you out and allows you to kind of take in the whole surrounding area when we're out on these trips. Like it's one thing to get like the down next to the river action. Like we've got a camera that can get us shots around camp and get great uh, dialogue and everything. We've got action cameras like GoPros that can really get those close encounters with white water and all the rest of it. And then it's kind of nice to have the drone to get those elevated, big, big shots to really add perspective to these landscapes that we're traveling through. And so uh, this is a, a purchase that we got for our Labrador trip that uh, now has just totally changed the way we film. So Noah and I actually both have this camera now, uh, this drone, and uh, we both really, really, really uh, like using it. So the reason that I chose this drone, again, was a balance between the quality and size. So going up to like the Mavic Pro or something like that, which is what I was debating between when I was looking at this, you get higher quality, but the amount of space that it takes up is just so much bigger. I'd almost need to bring a second Pelican case just for that camera, which I wasn't looking to make my kit any bigger than this single Pelican case. So the fact that I'm able to fit this drone 
and the remote control inside the Pelican case with all my other camera gear was really what sold me on it and the quality that we get out of this has been amazing. I think there's some new versions now and the quality might even be better on like the Mavic Air 2 because uh, I'm sure that they're just constantly making improvements on these products so definitely worth checking out some of their newer products but again this shoots in 4k up to 30 frames per second uh, or full HD up to I think 120 frames per second so really really good quality out of this the downside the photos are only at about 12 megapixels I believe which was kind of one of the drawbacks of this camera but uh, again the photos are still really good on it um, I've been able to blow some of them up on big canvas and they still look great even even when um, when blown up but uh, it was kind of one of the downsides with going with this one is the photo quality just wasn't quite uh, the same as some of the other models so another question I often get asked with the drone is how long can we fly it and the reality is is on one of these batteries we are maybe getting 15 minutes of flight is what I would say safely and there's a whole strategy that we have behind flying these so if I were to take a battery 15 minutes I'm looking at this being three different flights of five minutes and so I try to really make sure that before I'm flying these I'm planning out my entire shot I'm planning when I'm gonna get photos I'm planning when I'm flying it Another big thing with these drones is it's one thing to have the drone, but to actually learn how to fly it to get really nice smooth shots is like a whole other skill that we've been developing over time to figure out how to make your shots look good. And so that all goes into that planning phase to make sure that you're getting the most out of each battery when you're out there. So I travel with six batteries on me. Um, so that works out to a total of an hour and a half of flying time. So sounds like a decent amount of flying time but it goes by pretty quick on these trips and so um, really making sure that you're planning and, and dialing in your shots is what's going to make sure that you get the most out of each of these batteries. The reason that I do five minute increments is because uh, it if it's earlier in the battery if I put a new one in and I only fly it for two minutes that's fine if it's a quick shot awesome but I think that the amount that it takes to power these things up, get them off the ground, get them up, it's worth spending five minutes to get those shots in. And when you get down to the bottom of the battery, this thing won't take off below 30%, or at least I haven't figured out a way to do it. So typically, if I'm getting close to that 30%, I know that I'm gonna fly this thing right down to the end of the battery and basically get it back right before it's gonna crash. And I, and I, and I am safe about this, I make sure to get it back get it off of water, make sure you're over land, and then also just making sure that uh, you're not pushing the battery too much where there's a chance that it's just gonna fall out of the sky on you. So another thing with this drone, another piece of equipment that I do carry with me is the variable ND filters again. So similar to the sunglasses that I carry for my Canon, I also have a pair of sunglasses for the drone. Uh, this has a whole bunch of small ND filters. This is a pack of six from Polar Pro. Um, I believe it's at one of their cinematic series, but there's both polarized and non-polarized lenses uh, that I can throw on here at different strengths, just depending on how sunny it is that day. The reason these are more important for the drone is because there is no aperture control on this drone. So uh, in order to have some sort of aperture control on this drone, you need to have these in order to control that. The final piece of camera gear that we bring with us on trips, and I'm sure many of you guys have seen us use this and are familiar with them yourselves, is a GoPro. So right now we are shooting with the GoPro Hero 8. Uh, I was previously using the GoPro Hero 3 Plus or something like that, and the difference in quality between this and that camera are just like, not even worth discussing because it's just a whole new world. GoPro has done so much to improve the quality of these cameras over the years. And most notably, what Noah and I would probably both agree that we've noticed the most on these Hero 8 cameras is in the stabilization. So watching this camera get rocked around in the boat normally would have been a, like an un, like unusable clip. Now you see this camera getting knocked around and somehow the stabilization in this is able to make it look crispy, clear, and you're able to see you cruising down rapids even though this thing's bouncing around in the back so the stabilization 
as dramatically improved on these. The other thing I would say is the audio. So even without a microphone and a case on the outside of this, as long as it's not wet, because uh, I've noticed that when it does get wet, that does affect the quality of the audio. As long as it's not wet, the audio on this has also been really good. The one downside being wind noise. You definitely need to make sure that you account for, uh, I know some people, uh, Chris Prouse actually gave us a tip on this, is using a small windscreen on the GoPro mic. And so I haven't tried this yet. Noah I know has tried it. Um, but the wind noise is really kind of only one of the downsides of the audio on this. But in calm conditions, the audio on this is impressive and uh, we've been really happy with it. So these GoPros are great for people on the go. They're great to just clamp on. You can get all sorts of different attachments for them. They're great to clamp onto the side of the canoe. You can put them on helmets for running white water. Uh, they're just so versatile and the fact that they're waterproof is another huge uh, bonus for us. So not being afraid to put it at the side of the canoe and water splashing up when you're in rapids or if you're releasing a fish and you want to get those underwater shots of, of fish or whatever, uh, it also works great for that. So um, it's just a very versatile camera, super small and uh, the quality again is just so great on them. So finally, that's covering all of the cameras that I fit into this Pelican case. The final piece would be the batteries. So I have this little Patagonia pouch here that I use. It was a perfect size for me to fit all of my batteries inside of. So I'm able to fit five, uh, five drone batteries, probably about six Canon batteries in here, six or seven Canon batteries, and then five or six GoPro batteries in here as well. And the other piece that I usually have in there is my SD card case, which carries all of my SD cards in little organized pouches that I'm able to uh, keep track of while we're out there, which ones I've used, which ones I haven't. I've got a whole system for labeling all of my memory cards so that I know which ones I've used and which ones I haven't. I usually clear these labels when I go out on a trip and then when I come back I know the actual order that all of these were used in. It's really helpful for organizing my footage when I get home to know which uh, memory card was used first and which one was second and which camera used it. Was it the drone? Was it the GoPro? Was it the Canon? So that is all good there. The other thing I keep inside this orange bag is uh, little accessories like a lens pen to clean lenses, lens cloths, I have some lens cloths in there as well. Um, I've got an extra pair of propellers for the uh, drone just in case, God forbid, I were to fly it into a tree or something and break a propeller. Uh, I do carry an extra set with me so that I'm able to swap them out in the field. So the other thing I keep in here is a tether. This is a tether for my GoPro. It hooks on to the little screw that goes into uh, the GoPro to secure it on. And then this other end has a little carabiner on it. It's a wire tether. And uh, I'm able to just kind of wrap that around again on something and clip it into place so that uh, if the mount were to break in white water, hopefully this is just a one added little security that hopefully when you get to the bottom of the set of rapids, your GoPro is still attached. Fingers crossed. And so that is pretty much everything inside this Pelican case. Something else I'd like to speak to is just the organization that I have in here. So you'll see I'm able to fit my camera along the left side here. I've got my variable ND filter underneath it. I'm able to fit the drone in next to it along with the controller. They all kind of fit in there snug. And then my GoPro is able to fit up front, even though most of the time the GoPro would be out on something. And my batteries are all able to fit along the side. The only variation that I would use with this is that sometimes I want to bring a zoom lens with me, in which case I take out my entire uh, battery pouch and I'd put this into my day pack and use this slot on the side here for a zoom lens to be able to fit into this kit. So that is like one modification that I can that I can add in. Also, I would say that I started by, if you've seen one of these Pelican cases when they're brand new, they come with all these squares on the inside that you can kind of slowly pull out to fit things in perfectly. I eventually just pulled all of those squares out and now I just have a wide open slot in here that I'm kind of able to just snug everything in perfectly 
and I find that it doesn't move around too much, which has been really helpful just to maximize the amount of space that I'm able to make out of this Pelican case and also just to actually allow modifications. If I get new lenses or new configurations, I'm able to kind of like move things around in here and not be confined to like the little holes that I made and have to buy new new pieces of foam all the time. So uh, that has always been good as well. Another little hack about these is that I've actually pulled this foam out along the top and used the back area here to to store documents, like if you have trip documents on you that are important, uh, that, that could be a good little spot to keep some of the, the papers that you need to keep dry. Um, and yeah, sometimes on shorter weekend trips, I'll be leaving my car keys in here just so that uh, I know that they're in a safe place. So that is pretty much everything I have to say about the Pelican case and the filming gear that goes inside of it. I do want to spend a quick minute talking about one final critical piece of our film kit, which is my solar panel and battery bank. So we have the Nomad 28 four panel uh, solar panel connected in with the Sherpa 100 AC battery bank. This system's been great for charging just about all of our batteries, whether it's the uh, GoPro, whether it's the Canon, or even the drone. One thing I will mention about the drone is that this is not powerful enough technically to charge the drone batteries, but I have done it. And so I still do it on trips. I have gotten a few errors when charging drone batteries where it'll say that the Sherpa 100 will overheat, but um, I, I still have had a lot of success with it. I have dedicated one drone battery to be the only battery that I charge with this and I kind of have flagged it as my sketchy drone battery and that's the one that I try not to fly over water. I try and I try to just be a little bit more careful with that battery uh, just in the event that for some reason it didn't get a good charge and it falls out of the sky. So little strategy there but uh, this has worked for me. It has overheated but everything's been fine. Um, in terms of like how long it takes to charge, I would say that on a, for my Canon batteries, it takes about 20% of this whole bank. So you can maybe charge about five batteries. With the GoPro, it takes about 15% to charge. So you get a little bit more, maybe six charges out of that. And then with the um, drone battery, it takes like 30%. So you can really only get three charges uh, when you're using it to charge the drone batteries. So uh, this kit has really allowed us to get more battery life on trips without having to carry a whole whack of other batteries with us, um, especially for those longer trips like in Labrador traveling for a month um, or even a two week trip when we were going to James Bay or Wabakimi, it's great to have these things um, just to expand the battery life. Uh, and they really don't weigh a whole lot. This dry bag has been great. It was a little camera bag that I've repurposed. It's a completely dry bag. Again, when I'm on the go, I can, uh, if we're splashing through white water, the power bank isn't really meant to get wet. That can get wet, the, the solar panel. So just wrapping it up in here, I'm able to clip this on to something in the boat to keep the battery bank charging uh, while we're out. In terms of the actual charge time, uh, on like a sunny day, we've almost been able to charge a, they say in sunny conditions, it takes about eight to 16 hours to fully charge this thing using the Nomad 28 solar panels. Uh, I think we've seen that happen on like a sunny day, being able to get like a solid, like three quarter charge on, on the battery bank. Even on cloudy days, if we leave it out on the boat, we're doing like a long paddling day. Even on a cloudy day, we've been able to get about 20% battery added um, to the battery bank, which is awesome. So my rule of thumb is that whenever I've got a battery that needs charging, I charge it right away because you never want to waste a sunny day by having a full battery bank if you have a battery that needs charging. So as soon as uh, a battery needs charging, I charge it that night and the next day I'm able to start recollecting juice to 
build the battery bank back up again to make sure that you're always optimizing how much power you have out there. So that's another little strategy that you guys can use with the solar panel system. So in terms of this whole kit, how much does it weigh? There is some weight that comes behind this. So this Pelican case right now weighs about 15 pounds with all of my camera gear in it, um, fully loaded, it's 16 pounds. It does weigh a lot, um, but it's something that I've just gotten used to carrying and it's worth it for me for the quality that I'm getting out of it. Uh, with this little solar panel kit, it weighs about five pounds, probably even less than that. I'm, uh, saying about five um, and uh, and really isn't that much heavier either again having this little extra bag that can just be clipped on to like a bear barrel or something when you're portaging uh, just really makes it easy to carry around so it's really not too bad all in all pretty compact kit for the filming capabilities that we're able to get out of it we've been really happy with this system over the years and uh, we hope that uh, maybe this helps inspire you with a kit that you want to build, uh, at least coming up with some cool ideas of what you might be able to do for your own film kit. Thank you very much for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what film kit you're using on your trips. And that's it for today. We'll see you on the next video.